David Moyes is staying at West Ham. Well, not totally officially, but about as official as it gets without David Moyes being sat on the uh, official chair, on the official website, with the pen in his hand, signing the contract. It's close. It's going to happen. David Moyes uh, hinted at it last night. Uh, now, Sean Weston, let me just get my glasses on, I'll read it to you now, has tweeted, uh, David Moyes is 100% staying on as West Ham manager next season. Joint chairman David Sullivan and a manager will sit down early next year. Obviously, worth remembering, early next year is a sort of a week away. Um, to agree terms and the length of the extension. Moyes believes he can still offer something to the Hammers and his project is unfinished. The club are happy to offer him a new contract. Today is the fourth year anniversary of Moyes joining the Hammers for his second stint. There you go. Um, look, Sean has got very, very good links within the club. Uh, he's just very well connected. He's obviously, Sean's been on his channel many times. I know Sean. That, that's that's going to be pretty solid information, it has to be said. Now, uh, before we, we talk about that, I, I do understand this is a divisive subject. It probably shouldn't be when you look at the look at the trophy win, uh, look at the league position. It probably shouldn't be that divisive that you discussed that a manager who's been successful at West Ham is about to get a new contract. But it is, but it is. And and it, and it is divisive because it is very, very polarising. Uh, David Moyes can be very polarising. Look, I think David Moyes' flaws are still there. And I think the things he does well are still there. I think his flaws will remain. I don't think there's any big one solution that when David Moyes signs a new deal, everyone's going to be happy all of the time. He's still going to have it within himself to to be bad at the things he's bad at, but also good at the things he is very, very good at. And I do look at some of the other clubs now and wonder if uh, maybe there'll be a lot of clubs who would probably crave for some of the stability that West Ham will get by, uh, by making this announcement, by keeping David Moyes on there. Because West Ham are, are in, in terms of Premier League, are in safe hands with David Moyes. And we might, we just might qualify for a fourth season of European football. There's a long way to go yet, but we might do it. And if David Moyes can get through the African Cup of Nations, can get through January and into February, still in sort of seventh place in the league. I know we're in sixth now, but sort of in seventh place in the league. Uh, then I, I think he was you know, in, in good shape to get a new deal anyway, because it's just four seasons consecutive of European football, a club like West Ham is, is not something that's achieved very, very regularly. As I say, the frustrations will, will remain with West Ham. He's not going to suddenly metamorphosize his style of football, but I do think there are a couple of caveats to him getting a new deal, and I wonder if they've been put in place. It, I think it's, it's clear what David Moyes does well. We, we saw the best of it. Against Arsenal, we saw the best of it. Against Manchester United, we saw the best of it against Fiorentina and got us that remarkable cup win. Um, it, was all, but it also seems poorly timed to point out what the worst of it is. But I think if I was negotiating David Moyes' new deal, I would want to know that I have a David Moyes who's on board with the... With the, with the strategy and with the infrastructure which the club wished to implement, and that is very much with Tim Stuyton still overseeing transfers. There were a lot of heroes to uh, the game against Arsenal. I've done the last two videos covering it. Some of them have been David Moyes' signings. Absolutely, Jared Bowen was a was a major part of that. Thomas Suchek was a major part of that. You know, a couple of David Moyes' signings. James Ward-Prowse, brilliant. Clearly a David Moyes' signing, but also... It was punctuated by uh, some wonderful displays from Tim Schneidson signings, you know, like Mavropanos, uh, Edson Alvarez, Mohamed Kudus. So I, I do wonder if if David Moyes has probably seen this and, and maybe gained some level of trust with Tim Stuyton and his signings coming in. We'll deal with that another time. This, this is more about David Moyes and his position. So I think if I was going to sit down with David Moyes and, I, and fresh out a new contract, I'd probably want to say to him, look, we're really happy with what you've done. We're really happy with the league position. But we we would prefer it if we can stick with this new structure. And just maybe just maybe David Moyes has, has, has bought into that, which is actually in January, Tim Stuyton is going to go out and look for players. Because I, I do think that's a very, very different thing to David Moyes, what, what we had before. Look, one of the reasons... The, well, we haven't struggled. We've done really well over the last two games. But one of the problems over the last two games is when you've looked at the bench, there hasn't been anyone there, really. David Moyes 
ideally won't use the players that are on his bench. So it's a case of someone choosing players that David Moyes will want to use. And I'm not sure David Moyes is the man best placed to do that. Uh, he said yesterday in his interview after the game, and it was really it was nice to see him looking so buoyant. But he said in his interview after the game that a manager lives or dies by his signings. I don't think that's absolutely accurate, by the way, because I think if that was the case, there, there should certainly be a level of scrutiny over Gianluca Scamacca, over the fact he won't use Maxwell Cornet, Silo Kera's not getting used. Um, I, I don't even want to mention Sai Ben Rahm. I really don't. I got accused of, of being a little bit too heavy on him last week, which I didn't think I was, but I, don't, I, I can't be uh, getting into all, all that again anyway. But suffice to say... I think there's a there's a disparity between the people that play in the first team and the people on the bench. So uh, I think that probably needs to be addressed there as well. But uh, so I, I don't look, I think there are things that need to be sorted out with David Moyes' new deal and things that need to be discussed in the negotiations. And they are exactly that negotiations. But I certainly don't think it's all bad. But, I, I, but by that same token, I certainly uh, do think that there are things. The, the youth setup. I think if I was in the youth setup uh, at the moment, I would... Probably not be thrilled at the news, truth be known. So I'd want, again, to know that there was some level of pathway that we're going to use these players. I think if, if David Moyes was using all of the players that he has on the bench, I think I'd be saying to Moyes, do you know what? No problem. But if he's not using them, then maybe, just maybe, he wants to give some of the youngsters a chance. If not, get some of them out on loan. Um, try and provide an infrastructure where they get some form, uh, some level of uh, of experience somewhere along the line. But I'm sort of mindful when I'm speaking, it might seem a little bit sort of doom and gloom. It's not doom and gloom at all. I think David Moyes with Tim Stein, with the right guidance from Tim Stein and buying the players can, can do, you know, pretty decent things in the Premier League. And he can do pretty good things in Europe too. Uh, I think he's enjoying it. He probably appears to be enjoying himself. And I think that's really good. Um, it's, it's, it's an odd one because it feels like the club are sort of, being a little bit hurried into this. They've been saying all season, they'll wait until the end of the year, they'll wait until the end of the year. Maybe they've just taken a look at the, the league table now and they thought, well, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. And whilst I do feel that there are a couple of managers who were considered, and I think Arna Slot was, was heavily amongst them, there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees that whoever comes in does a better job than David Moyes. And you've only got to look at what's happened with, with Chelsea who continue to change their manager and, and they've got things wrong. Um, I mean, there's, there's a number of clubs who are probably uh, doing worse than you think they should have done. I mean, a couple of clubs really who have been lauded as as the model uh, for which we should all follow, like Brentford, who are not, maybe not doing as well as they might have done. Don't get me wrong, I think Brentford have done remarkably well as a Brighton. These are small clubs who are, you know, really established themselves as, as a Premier as Premier League teams, which I think is absolutely amazing. But I do think West Ham have probably higher and loftier aspirations, bearing in mind we want to increase the uh, stadium capacity to 66,000. I think if we're going to do that, if we're going to be spending the money that, that it appears that we are doing at the moment and being what would be, in terms of attendance, the second biggest club in the Premier League, then there have to be, I, I think... Uh, a certain amount of assurance from the manager that he's going to buy into what uh, the club are doing. I, I think overall, I, I was, I, I, I think I, I would have probably waited until the end of the season and decided then. But because I, I do, I do think we're a sort of we're another couple of defeats away from another drama, and it swings back and forth. It was interesting. I, I posted a video last night, and. Um, and I think there's there's three types of West Ham fan with David Moyes. There are those that really want him out and won't shift. There's those that really want him to stay and won't shift. And, and then there's a, a bunch of people in the middle, and I would consider myself amongst them. There's there's a certain level of uncertainty there. And, and for both, for both extremes, I understand my position probably looks preposterous. Um, why would you not want him out? Um, or the other, the other way is, why would you not want to keep him? He's been our most successful manager in years. And, and I, you know what? It's hey, it's sport. It's sport. Sport is is results are driven, and and I, I do think there are times, particularly after a loss, I get frustrated with his lack. Not not just any loss. Like, I mean, a thumping five nil loss. You, you get frustrated with it, and you start questioning the sort of things that he does wrong. Um, but then you have these like epic wins that we've just had against Man United and against. Uh, against Arsenal, when you look at our points tally after 19 games is, is our highest in the Premier League, I think if I've got that right, 
you look at that and you think, well, hold on, maybe there's, there's a lot of reasons to be positive. You look at David Moyes' record at Everton, he did really well, I think, for a year or two. Then he had a, he dipped. He dipped. I remember his team, it was called the Dogs of War, Lee Carsley, uh, Thomas Graveson, they were scrappers. And then, then he rebuilt, and he was a lot better after that. He, he, I think he played well for the first two years, had a flirt with relegation, and he finished sort of in the top four or five, certainly in the top six for pretty much the rest of his Everton career. Maybe that's what he's repeating now. Maybe this is part of the, the project, so to speak, that, that we're looking at here. Um, so I think there's a lot there's a lot to be optimistic about. There really, really is. And particularly when you look around, David Moyes has done some some really good things. There's no doubt about it at all. But I just think, I think probably the best message I read last night that, that wasn't to do with the game, and it is a bit weird, it's a bit weird. We win against Arsenal and then, well, what happens is whenever we win really well, there are always a number of people that turn around and say, oh, well, where are the Moyes out boys now? Um, and whenever we lose really badly, there's always a number of people who post, well, where, where are the... Um, where are the Moyes in boys now? You know, and it's a little bit like that. And, and it's, as I say, from sort of looking at it from sort of the middle section, you can always sort of see it happening. But I think one of the, the best posts I read that was not to do with the Arsenal game after the, the video last night was somebody saying, um, I think I might be changing my mind on David Moyes, you know. I, I initially wanted him out, but I think he's winning me around. And that, out of all the posts about Moyes, made the most sense to me. That, that I can absolutely absolutely understand you know but I, but by the same token you go and look at the 5 nil, a sort of 5-1 loss to Liverpool and a 5 nil to um, to Fulham there are people saying on that look I, I was Moyes in but now I'm, I'm starting to wonder if, if he should get the new deal it's all in a state of flux but it's not anymore and I, t I tell you what you know if he gets the new deal then um, then we just got to sort of you know well you, you do what you want you don't have to get behind it you can make your own decision but you know certainly I, I would hope that we can progress and we can push forward get behind the manager we're still going to have the boring games we're still going to have those games where we sit back and defend look I don't think anyone minds when we do it against Arsenal or against Manchester United but as myself and Gio were talking about and Gio made the point in the breakfast show this morning when we sit back and we just defend doggedly against Sheffield United or Nottingham Forest, um, you know, maybe he wants to open it up and expand it a bit. But the one thing that I think it is clear is, is so much of this stuff is about players. You know, I, we played those tactics against Arsenal when they worked because we got better players than when we've tried to play that way against Arsenal before and it hasn't worked. It, it might just be as simple as that, you know. Um, Moise is not going to change in terms of his tactics. He's always going to be that manager. However, I think when it works, it's it's a sight to behold. It's enjoyable, and I thoroughly enjoyed watching that Arsenal game. The weird thing is, I wasn't I wasn't nervous. I didn't find it particularly nail biting. Actually, I I think I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the defensive performances and and sort of the work rate of so many of the players. And there's so much to admire in that. And I, and I just as I say, David Moyes getting a new deal. Is it what I would have done? I would have waited until the end of the season. It has to be said. I, I'd wanted to see a little bit more because I, I still think this this story would have had some more twists and turns between now and the end of the season. But if it is going to be done, um, then David Moyes gets a new deal. If it's with a proviso that really he sort of keeps his hands off of the transfers. Obviously, he's going to have to say to Tim Steiton, I, I, can, you, can you go and find me a striker? Or can you find me a left winger? Can you find me a right back or whatever it may be, he's going to have to do that, right? Then, I, then I, I'm absolutely fine with that. I, I'm fine with him getting a new deal. I really am. I, I, I don't think it's good news for everyone. I think it's bad news for some. I think poor old Flynn Downs is probably thinking, oh, I'm probably not going back to West Ham now, am I? I think there's probably people um, who in the in the academy who are going to be a little bit demotivated by the news. Uh, no doubt about that at all. But... The stability it gives the club, I, I do think, is is quite a lot. And, and as you know, if you're a regular watcher, I've never subscribed to the theory that David Moyes has lost the dressing room. I, I just don't. I think it's too easy to say that. I think there were certain, there's clearly certain players who he's lost, and I could list them now, but I've listed them all before. But I think there's a number of players, and they're generally the players in his first team, who he hasn't lost the dressing room. You, you got that anyway. He, he said in the interview afterwards, he said that in the dressing room they were singing about having two days off to David Moyes. They're singing at the manager and you saw him walking around cuddling them. That just doesn't happen when, when you've lost players. It, it really, really doesn't. So, um, yeah, I, I still think he's very much got the faith of the dressing room. I, I think that the next part for David Moyes is to get the faith of the squad and get players that he's going to use. As I say, if he can get through January, 
get to February and we are still in, I say seventh, seventh, eighth, something like that. And we're still in with a shout because we've got some tough games coming up at the start of February. Make no mistake about it. Um, then then I, I really think we can push on and we can have an excellent season. And I, and I have to say, if we can get a fourth season of European football, it, it's... It's really hard then to complain about David Moyes getting a new job. Quite frankly, I think he'll have probably earned it.